Welcome to a tour of it on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show an extended example of using the enchant macro within Harlow 3.3. So we've been learning across a number of videos how we can use changer macros. These are just macros that change things as a result. Text style, text size, text color, and a number of other macros within Harlow. We've also seen how we can use the change macro to use the name of a particular tag and then use changer values to do something to it, change its size or color or whatever. We've now also learned that all of these things are in fact called enchantments. That is the visualization change or the change in visuals of something within a passage. And we saw the enchant macro is capable of doing what the change macro does plus new things. And the new thing is the enchant macro can do is find particular words or phrases or sets of symbols and change them somehow. In fact, we saw in a previous video that we could find things like the word this or the word words and then change it by applying combinations of changer macro values. Just like we had when we were looking for particular hooks, we can also apply to words and phrases within the same passage in Harlow. So let's look at an example, a somewhat silly example perhaps, of how that could be really successful to create a particular effect within a story. So as we navigate between front room, side room, and back room, all of which are linked to each other that we can see right here, all three passages here are linked to each other. As we move through here, there will be a 50% chance of book having a particular change or value applied to it. So let's look at what that happens over here in Haunt. Haunt says that if random one to two is one, so a 50% chance, one or two, then we enchant book, the word book, in a text style sway. That is, as we move room to room to room, there's a 50% chance each time we move that the word book will have a text style sway applied to it. Put another way, we can create the effect in a kind of silly manner of a haunting. That is, random chance as we move room to room that a book might sway, or the word book might sway. So let's just see this in action. So, oh, there it is right there immediately. Look, the book is swaying. Ooh, there's a haunting. So let's move to the side room. Hmm? No haunting this time. Back room? No? Front room? Ooh, there's the sway again. Side? Ooh, here. Okay, front. Okay. No? Ooh, now we're in the back room and there's a sway. And of course, there's just a 50% chance each time. And we could change that to some other percentage, 30%, 5%, 20%, however we wanted to set it up for random chance. What's important, though, is the separation of macros and content. In a previous extended example, I talked about the ways that we have two different approaches of thinking about styling things within Harlow. We can, if we want, set up a bunch of changer values in variables, save them, and apply the variables to hooks. Alternatively, we can also name hooks and apply styles later using the change macro or now the enchant macro. And now as a variation on that second approach, we don't really have to set up much at all other than setting up the enchant macro with the things we want to change using the enchant macro to create enchantments to then change the text in the passage. All we need to do each time if we want to separate the content and macros is use the display macro. So we previously saw this in another video, but here's the exact same technique used again. I've separated things out into haunt. Anytime I want those styles to be applied, I just display haunt and I let Harlow do the rest. So one of the ways we can start to approach designing stories within Harlow is think about them in those two different kind of parallels I established. In the first one, we can save a bunch of things to variables, establish a bunch of variables at the top, use those values of variables to apply to hooks. And then as we move through the story, those styles will be applied. Alternatively, and again, both are perfectly valid, but alternatively, we can set up a bunch of text or set up a bunch of hooks potentially if we want to use the change macro, and then use enchant or change to then affect that text or affect those hooks that we've set up to apply the same styles. So as we think about changer macros, and especially changer values, we have two different approaches, and of course, mixing of the two that we use. In this particular example, I have separated out the content on one side, the 
macros on the other, and whenever we need them, just displaying them, that is including the contents of one passage and another, allowing us to, if we want, start to separate those concerns. Again, we don't have to, we can use either approach or a mix of them that I have talked about in this video, but if we want, we can start to kind of separate things. I want my code over here, I want my text over here, and if that helps you to better organize your story, that's a completely valid approach. Again, there's no more valid approach than the other. We can mix the two, use variables, and use all kinds of things, but we can create a kind of haunting effect, or at least a kind of simple haunt effect, by applying styles using enchant to then act on words instead of needing to know the name tags of hooks that we would have needed with the change macro. So the enchant macro leads us a little more down the line of creating greater complexity as we think about changer macros within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.